Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Andrew's Church on this glorious Easter morning, wherever you're joining us from today. It's a, certainly a very beautiful sunny day here in Cambridge. For our service today, you might like to have something with which to make a joyful noise with very shortly and also a small bowl of water. But don't worry if you haven't got them. I'm joined by a number of people today. Hannah is going to be speaking to us later. Alice and Andrew are uh, reading. Pip is going to be leading our prayers. Nick and the Moyer family are in church and Nick will be uh, presiding at communion a little bit later. And the Harmer family are leading our musical worship this morning so we can all sing very loudly from home. So thank you to everybody. And behind the scenes, David is mastering all the technology. But we start our service by going back to tomorrow evening, back in the darkness outside church as we lit the Easter candle. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
is a time when we remember our baptisms. Jesus was buried. And in our baptism, we are buried with Christ. But we then rise to new life in our baptism. Normally at church, we would remember our baptisms by being sprinkled with water. Sadly, our technology doesn't quite stretch to that. So you might like to have a little bowl of water with you. And when I come to the bit where we pronounce God's words of forgiveness, you might like to make a sign of the cross on your forehead or on the forehead of those who are uh, with you or even sprinkle each other with some water as we remember our baptisms. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. now let us pray together the prayer for today. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading is taken from Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Andrew, if you could just unmute, please. Do you want to start again? Because we can't hear you. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came and followed him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus's head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by, him, by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned round and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. While it was still dark last night, some of us gathered for the Easter vigil service in church. Um, as we saw at the start of this service, Nick and Catherine lit the new fire and Easter candle outside. Um, and I have a picture of it here to, to share with you um, as well. So you can see just how dark it was um, when they lit that fire. It was still dark when we met last night and we gathered to remember that very first Easter morning. This morning, I wasn't quite awake early enough for it still to be completely dark. Um, but I was awake early enough to see the sky change colours from a really deep blue to a light morning grey to golden, like you can see in these few pictures from outside my house this morning. And you can see on this last one, the shape of the sun just here behind the clouds. I was outdoors as the sun rose and could hear uh, a cacophony of birdsong as the dawn broke on this Easter morning. And while I was there, wrapped up really warm and with plenty of coffee. Um, I read our gospel reading for today, uh, words at this new beginning um, caused by Jesus' resurrection. And I also read out the words of Genesis 1 and 2, words from the story of the very first beginning, the story of creation. 
In the beginning, it begins when God first began to create, the earth was empty. Darkness and the spirit of God were over the surface of the deep. And while it was still dark at that very first beginning of creation, God spoke. God said, let there be light. And it's like God called out a name, light, and like that calling of its name caused the light to become and to be the best of itself. When God names something, it is created. God's words bring it to life. It's like when someone who loves you knows and remembers your name. When they remember and say your name, you know that you are loved and seen and remembered for who you are. And this helps to bring out the best in you. Our gospel reading for this Easter Sunday morning begins in the dark as well. While it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was moved away. She ran to Simon Peter and the other disciple. They have taken Jesus from the tomb, she cries, and we don't know where they've put him. And Peter and the other disciple run to the tomb to see for themselves and they see that it's empty and they go back home to wonder and wait. Yet Mary stands at the tomb weeping. She is in floods of tears and it is still dark. Jesus, whom she loved and who loved her, is dead. And what sadness she must have felt in that moment. Jesus had known her the most. He had known and loved her enough to cast out demons from her, as we read earlier in the Gospels, and to come really close to her in friendship. Jesus knew her name and now he was gone. And so, of course, she was crying on that morning after the cross while it was still dark. And I think that this is really important for us to notice this darkness and crying, even on Easter Sunday morning. And we will get to joy in a moment. Um, but first, let's remember that this great Easter day begins like creation in the chaos of darkness. It begins in sadness and confusion and loneliness. Jesus, the one in whom many had hoped, the one whose love had changed lives, was gone. And these are feelings which I am sure we will all have felt in new ways this last year, through the ups and downs of the pandemic. We have people we miss and places we miss. We have things that we used to do that we haven't been able to for a long time. We have plans that have changed. There are really hard things going on in the world. And the love of Jesus that changes lives can feel so far away sometimes. And we need to feel sad about this. Let us weep in the darkness of Easter morning with Mary for everything that we have lost. For the emptiness of the tomb and the silence of the one who knows the names of all things. Yet, as we well know, the story of Easter morning doesn't end in darkness. And I wonder if... Deep down, Mary knew that. I wonder if in Mary's heart there was still some kind of glimmer of hope because as she wept, she knelt to look into the tomb. Maybe looking for answers, maybe hoping that she had been mistaken. Maybe she was hoping somehow to hear Jesus say her name again. And so she kneels to look into the tomb. And in that darkness, amazingly, Angels appear to her and they invite her to share her sadness with them, to bring her feelings into the light. Why are you crying? They ask. And Mary tells them, naming her sadness. And then she turns and she sees a gardener. Like the angels, the gardener asks her why she is crying. And again, she tells him, naming that sadness. Mary the gardener says. And in that speaking of her name, Mary sees that the gardener is really Jesus. Jesus Christ, incredibly yet undeniably alive again after his death, names her. And in that naming, Mary recognises the voice of the one whom she loves and the one who loves her. And in response, Mary names Jesus as she knows him. Teacher, she says. And in this moment of naming and being named, I think we can see the joy of Easter Sunday and the new creation that Jesus's resurrection brings about. This naming on Easter Sunday is like the naming from that very first beginning story of creation. 
like God named light from darkness, God with us once more in the person of the risen Christ now continues to name. From that silence and darkness of the empty tomb, there are now God's words being spoken again, creating a kingdom in which life overcomes death, in which light overcomes darkness, and in which love overcomes fear. And this is the new creation that each of us, wherever we are, are invited into through this Easter Sunday. A new creation in which we too are named by Jesus Christ, called out of darkness and into his marvellous light. We are named and we are known and we are loved. Let us then seek to hear the names of life and light and love that God is speaking over us and over the church and over the world. Names spoken by the voice of the living Jesus. Listen for the ways that Jesus is calling out the best in you and in those around you. Naming your gifts and strengths and uniqueness so that you can grow in who you are and how you love the world around you. Listen for the ways he is calling your name with a love that casts out fear, helping you to be brave when you need to be brave. Maybe as you go back to school or work or as we all together uh, go through these things that are continuing to change because of the pandemic. Listen for the ways that Jesus is naming the good things that can come in our world in the next weeks and months as we start to shape what life will look like. Ways that we can slowly start together meeting in person again with friends and in church. Or of finding new ways to care for the world around us, to seek justice and truth. Or to support each other as we each have need. Mary, when she heard Jesus call her name and saw him impossibly and wonderfully risen from the grave, was given instructions from Jesus to go and tell the disciples what she had seen. Perhaps we could say she was told, she was given the task of naming before them the reality of Jesus's resurrection. Like Mary then, let us hear Jesus name us and call us into his way of new life. And let us follow him in love, sharing the joy of this new creation of which we are each a part. Amen. Let us now declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers, and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, on this most wonderful of days, we thank you that you sent your son to save us and set us free. Thank you for the triumph of the cross over evil and death and for the joy of knowing your love and salvation. On this day of new life and new beginnings, we look to all that is challenging in the world. Give us the grace to hear your voice and the strength to continue working for your kingdom. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world celebrating Easter this weekend. And we ask for protection for our church family facing persecution in different areas of the world, but especially those in the Central African Republic, Indonesia and Nigeria. Wherever there is darkness or despair, may the hope and light of your resurrection transform all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that in a world which we have filled with violence and hostility, the joy of the resurrection may be made known. We pray for love in response to hatred, for trust in place of suspicion, and for reconciliation where there are tensions and conflict. 
Today, we lift to you communities that live amongst racial tension, that they would find peace and understanding among them. Give us your wisdom, your courage, and your love to create a world where everyone can live without fear or prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you that some of us have been able to enjoy the company of others outside in this beautiful spring weather as restrictions begin to ease. But we lift to you those who remain apart from loved ones and distance from friends, those in the UK and other countries in Europe and around the world that face the prospect of further restricted living. Give your Easter peace to all those who are in need that they may find life and wholeness in your saving strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community of Chesterton, our schools, businesses and homes. May the light of Easter illuminate the shadows of our relationships that the love which conquers death may bind us together. We know there might be difficult times ahead, so we pray for people who are out of work, who are lonely, or those who are anxious or afraid for the future. May you give us all the inner peace that comes from knowing that you never abandon us and give us the courage to reach out to those who need to know your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for friends and family who are ill, and remember them now in the quietness of our hearts. We bring them to you in the confidence that you love them and you know their every need. We pray for Rhiannon and Alex Copewood's new baby, Erin, Eric Burbridge and Julia Ison. And we also think of those who have recently passed away. Comfort those who mourn and wrap your arms around them, holding them tight. We remember Will Anderson and Helen Nimmo Smith, and from the Book of Remembrance, Dorothy Knight and Marjorie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the light. Help us to live lives which are worthy of your eternal joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share with one another, if we're with other people, a sign of peace. Jesus died, the 
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Oh, so 
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
this is a moment when ordinarily we would all be receiving communion. And there is an opportunity after this service to go to church and to receive communion. But for now, we remember and take a moment to be still, to remember that this is a special holy moment, that the risen Jesus is with us wherever we are this morning. Let us pray. God of our salvation, you have restored us to life. You have brought us back again into your love by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue to heal us as we go to live and work in the power of your Spirit to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. So as I've just mentioned, if you would like to receive communion, then once the service is finished, don't rush off immediately. Once the service is finished, then make your way to church. And Nick will be in church until about 12 o'clock when you will be able to receive communion. When you go into church, you'll be able to see the flowers which we can um, see in the Easter garden. Uh, the church looks really beautiful. And if you're a little bit younger, there might be something for you to find after you've received communion. You'll be able to go out into the uh, churchyard and find some things that are covered in some shiny paper. I can't imagine what they might be, but um, do go along to church um, between 11 and 12 to receive communion and see what you might be able to find as well. As I say, the church does look absolutely beautiful. Um, it was just wonderful being in there last night and this morning with the sunshine, with all the flowers. Um, thank you to everybody who has decorated the church and contributed to all our services, our musicians and singers, and everybody who's worked in the backgrounds and contributed to all the different services. Um, we couldn't do these things without you all. So um, a great big thank you. So as well as coming to church um, before uh, 12 o'clock, there is another chance to receive communion this afternoon. At 5.30, there will be a service of Holy Communion. So uh, you'd be very, very welcome to come along to that service this afternoon at 5.30 um, in church. It'd be great to see you then. And next Sunday, we're um, back to our uh, say our normal our normal pattern. Well, what's become our uh, normal pattern? Um, eight o'clock services will be in church as well as live streamed. There'll be a family Zoom um, at ten o'clock, um, a Zoom for everybody else at eleven o'clock, and a five thirty service um, in church. Um, throughout the uh, month of April, we're going to be having uh, 5.30 services of Holy Communion in church each um, Sunday. There won't, however, be any morning prayer online this week. Uh, we're going to all be saying morning prayer by ourselves um, and not online. But morning prayer will start again online the subsequent week. So now we come to join together in our final hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within you, Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.